You, you made this. Um, this is man-made by Dutch engineers 300 years ago, in the time of our King Charles I. And the levels is not natural. It was made by Dutch engineers 300 years. It is not a, le a natural area, so this is all man-made, and thanks to you. So it's, lo it's lo low-lying land. It's above sea level, yeah. unlike Holland, but the, you pump the water into the rivers up. So the rivers are above the surrounding yeah. land, which is, of course, slightly more unusual. Can you explain me, for, what, this is farmland. How important is it for the local economy here? Oh, enormous. This is, you know, the way of life for hundreds of folk people. It's also in terribly important for tourism. And lastly, it is an ecologically beautiful area, which was created by the Dutch 300 years ago. How normal is this? Because you've got floods every year now, isn't it? Well, we had one terrible one last year. This is actually much more extreme. But because the climate is changing, this is going to become more tricky. Now, this shouldn't be the case. We had these rivers dredged, and the river behind me is the Parrot, and it's 40% below what it should be to hold in its holding capacity. Yeah. Why is dredging not happening? Because we have an environmental agency, and the clues in the name is an environmental agency, and it should be a rivers authority. And what's happened is they've just stopped doing this since 95, when the then head of the environment agency said she'd like to blow up all the pumps and flood this whole thing permanently. But they say, well, dredging is, is only a very small part of the solution. Well, well, they would, and quite honestly, this is a what we call in England a quango, which needs to be broken up. It's headed by uh, Lord Smith, who's a complete joke now. He's a sort of standing caricature of himself. And that is just completely wrong. And that's what's so frustrating about this. You have civil servants who are, I, as far as I'm concerned, are not playing the game and they're saying to people this is not the solution it is the solution we've been speaking to your guys in Holland and they say oh absolutely we can do this yeah. give yourself capacity that water then goes in this river yeah are you looking for Holland for advice for expertise more than that I think we're needing your experiences you you've been doing this a lot longer than we have and you're very good at it we need to know at political level how you do it at civil service and function level and we need to talk to your companies about how physically they could make this 40% bigger, which is not a great difficulty for you. It seems to be an insurmountable difficulty for us. Yeah, is that an immediate thing you're looking from Dutch companies or Dutch government, which, which, which would you like to see quickly happening now? Well, I think it's got to be everything, because we need to learn how you governance your system out there. Now, I, I've been talking to my counterparts in Strasbourg from Holland. They've been absolutely fascinating. And what I think we need to learn is top to bottom. Get, we can't get on this land at the moment. You can see, obviously, if we put a machine here, it would sink. So we have got some time. So let's learn everything we can as quickly as possible from the Dutch people and the Dutch political system. Bring it back here and put it into action. So 300 years later, we're learning the same lesson we should have learned 300 years ago. Yeah. Uh, we chopped off King Charles I's head, so if Chris Smith better watch himself. C can you compare it, though? Is this very similar to Dutch low-lying land? No, it's not. Now, this is what's interesting. I believe Schiphol is actually sort of five metres underwater whereas this is above water, yet you have the same rainfall, you have the same wind, yet you don't flood. So we are actually in a much worse position where you are actually achieving what you set out to do through your system, which we have failed dismally to do because the environment agency in this country is completely out of control. We've had exceptional weather the last few months. Storms, uh, the wettest January in more than 100 years. There's not much the government can do about that, is it? No, nothing. And we didn't, in fact, ask the government to come in straight away. We've been handling water since Roman times. And we actually are not too bad at it in the sense of local involvement. We asked the government to step in about three weeks ago because we would got to the end of our resources. And Sedgemoor District Council, which is a little district council just up the road here, actually called the, the emergency. The government responded, and they have done a very good job. Owen Patterson, the Secretary of State, came down. One of the meetings that he was determined and said, look, you have six weeks to put an action plan together. We are then going to dredge these rivers. The Prime Minister of Great Britain, David Cameron, has ex said exactly the same. So today we start the, the task of putting together the plan to get this sorted out for once and for all. And you can't control the weather, but you can have a damn good go at it. Could I have acted quicker? No. You, you, it's a, it is a finite problem. If you come in too quickly, you have pumps sitting doing nothing. There are 64 pumps now here pumping uh, something like a million gallons an hour, I think it's, I can't remember, the figures are enormous. Uh, if you come in too early, it doesn't have anything to do. If you come in too late, obviously it's the opposite, and that's what's happened. But actually, you have a 
three or four days in which to make that decision. Uh, you never get it quite right. Um, the government will respond when they're asked to respond. They were asked to respond by District Council, not by the Environment Agency, not by, dare I say, to other bodies. They were asked by Little District Council, yeah. and they responded. So I think that's a pretty clear indication that the government are worried. Final question. There's been a debate going on the last few weeks about the budget cuts on the Environment Agency. Do you think that was a wise decision to do it, or do they actually need more money? They have the money, but it's the way they spend it. They spent £31 million sterling on a bird sanctuary at the end of this river, down behind me, about 10 miles, 15 kilometres that way. £31 million. I want about £5 million to dredge this. Something is very wrong. The people that work for the Environment Agency on the ground are absolute lions. They really are superb. They have worked their socks off, day in, day out. Let's get rid of the donkeys at the top. They're the ones that have caused the problem. They are useless. They all sit in London with books. They don't actually come down here in wellies like you and the guys around you. They don't really care. Let's get rid of them. Let's use the money wisely. And that means the Environment Agency then will be doing the job of protecting the people of the United Kingdom. But until we get some expertise in to show them how to do it, this is going to be a continuous circle.